Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, great to have you. So glad you're part of Christ Community Chapel. Welcome those of you in East Hall and those of you tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, if you've been around Christ Community Chapel for any length of time, you know that children are important to us. We love our kids, and we want our kids to love this place, but more importantly, to come to know and to love Jesus. And we are coming up on one of the most important weeks in our church calendar. We call it Vacation Bible Camp, where we focus on our kids for four days, and our staff does this phenomenal job of creating a week for them uh, that will encourage them, that will make them fall in love with this place and fall in love with Jesus. And I want to tell you two things. One, if you have children, if you have grandchildren, if you have nieces and nephews, make sure they come. They will have a blast. The second thing, though, is if you're looking for a place to serve, and here at CCC, uh, we serve, and it's big for us because it's part of our purpose statement. We exist to help people come to know Jesus, for you to grow in your relationship with Him, but you don't stop there. You serve, which is why everybody who's been coming to CCC for any length of time finds a place to serve somewhere. Uh, International Friendship Connection, great place to serve but we are everywhere. And so if you're looking for a place, if you're new and you're looking for a place to serve, this is a great place to kind of dip your toe in because you only have to serve for four days where you pour yourself into children uh, and you just have uh, a blast while you do it. So if you want to do that, that we have a sign-up table out in the atrium. Please sign up. We need you to minister to our children. And that happens in a couple of weeks. All right? Okay, this weekend we start a four-week series on Matthew chapter 13. Uh, Jesus was a great teacher, and not just because of what he taught, his content, but also how he taught. He taught telling stories. In fact, Matthew 13 says that Jesus didn't teach anything without using a story. We call his stories parables because he used them to illustrate a truth. The word parable means literally to put something side by side with something else, almost like an analogy. So Jesus would begin by saying, the kingdom of God is like, and then he would tell a story. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus tells four stories about the kingdom of God. We're going to look at the first story today. But before we do, let me tell you this, let me remind you that Jesus came talking about bringing the kingdom of God, which means that Jesus didn't come just to forgive your sins. Now, I know that sounds weird. He came to forgive you of your sins, but that's not all. And sometimes people treat Jesus like that's all he did, like he came handing out almost like credit cards that said, I died for you. And every time you do something that you know he doesn't want you to do, you you, you swipe the credit card and go put this on Jesus' account. I'm good. But that's not why he came. He came to forgive you of your sins, but also to bring in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is, was intended to transform this world in every way it needs to be transformed. To be transformed economically, racially, spiritually, emotionally, politically, in every way. I, I introduced you to a Greek word last weekend. The Greek word is palagenesia. Palagenesia, it's what Jesus used, that word, he used that word to describe the coming of the kingdom, the renewal of all things where the world becomes exactly what it was created to be. And the question is, how does that happen? Better question, how does that happen inside of you, inside of me, where the palagenesia, the power to renew all things, begins to renew us and to make us the kind of people that we are intended to be? This is how. Calling this message, the kingdom comes as a seed. The kingdom comes as a seed. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read the first nine verses. It'll be up on the screen. And then I'm going to, I'm going to jump over to verse 18 and read verses 18 through 23. That's what it says. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. 
And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they didn't have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. When the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Okay, the first thing Jesus says is the kingdom of God is like a farmer who goes out to sow seed, and he throws the seed all kinds of places, and it lands on different types of soil, and then it has a different reaction in those types of soil. And the disciples want to know exactly what he's talking about, so they ask him to clarify. And in verse 18, he clarifies. He says, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As far as what was sown among thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands that he indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. This is God's word. All right, before I get to my three points, I want to remind you that of the, the weirdness of the story. I mean, because it's easy when you, when you keep hearing Jesus' stories, and if you're familiar with them, to miss how funky they are. Because what he says is the kingdom of God comes and it comes like a farmer throwing seed out in the field. I've been reading in the Old Testament about the kingdom of Babylon and how the the kingdom of Babylon came and took over different countries. When the kingdom of Babylon came, it didn't come like a sower sowing seed. It came like a tornado, like a fire. And by the time it was through with an area, there were only two types of people. There were dead people and there were Babylonians or people who had pledged their allegiance to Babylon. The kingdom of God is completely different than anything we have in this world, and it comes in a completely different way. So the three questions for this morning are, what is the seed? How do we get the seed? And what happens when the seed grows? What is the seed? How do we get the seed? And what happens when the seed grows? First, what is the seed? Seeds are really interesting. I uh, saved these seeds from a couple of apples that I ate this week. Uh, seeds are tiny. No one is afraid of a seed, right? I mean, I could just throw it at somebody. I really did throw it. No, did I hit you? I could put your eye out. Anyway, <laughs> last night I threw it, and the guy who had hit, like, came up to me afterwards, and he goes, I got your seed. And I was going, ah, it's like a ninja. Got it. All right. But nobody's afraid of a seed. If you were God, and you were going to make the changes, transform this world, we all know it needs to be transformed, it needs to be changed in huge ways, how would you do it? What would be your tool of choice? Okay, this is a hammer, a mallet. Which is more powerful? A mallet or a seed? Well, it depends. It depends on if you want to change something in five seconds, use this, a mallet. But if you have time, the power between a hammer and a seed, it's not even close. This guy named John Chapman in the early 1800s who left his home in uh, Lowminster, Massachusetts, And he began to walk around, and he walked all around Pennsylvania, and then he walked around West Virginia, and then Ohio, and then he went up to Ontario, and then he came down and spent time in Indiana and Illinois. And everywhere he went, he planted seeds. We remember him as Johnny Appleseed. And I tried to look up how many trees they think Johnny Appleseed planted in his lifetime. 
And there was, they couldn't even estimate it. All they could say was that there were whole counties that became orchards in every one of those states because of John Chapman. So you have the difference between a seed and a hammer is huge because John, John Chapman planted what, it, what became thousands of trees, hundreds of thousands of apples, maybe millions of apples that fed people over the last 200 years. You take a, a hammer and you plant it in the ground and dig it up in 200 years, this is what you have. You just have a hammer. You don't even have two hammers, just one. You plant a seed, you can cover entire counties with trees, produce hundreds of thousands, millions of apples. You know why? Because inside of a seed is life. And that life is power. It's power. But when the kingdom of God comes even to you, it comes and it seems small. It seems like it's underwhelming instead of overwhelming in the way the kingdom comes. You know why? Because it comes as a message. This is what it says in verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, that's what Jesus says, the message, the kingdom comes, the seed itself is a message. It's information. We call it the gospel. And it's such a wild message. This is the message we tell people. The God of the universe became a human being. And then he was tortured and he died on a cross to pay a price for you that you couldn't pay for yourself. To pay a price for your sin, your brokenness. And he, he then reconciled you to a holy God through his death. Now, now, that part about you being a sinner is one of the things that all of us really know. Even the most ardent atheist, I think that part of the gospel message sticks in their throat like a chicken bone. Because every single person, every single one of us knows that we're not what we want to be, should be, ought to be. Right? And that's what sin feels like. And then we say that this Jesus went to the cross, died for us, and then he rose again with power. And if you believe it, it has the power to change your life. And you tell somebody that, and they look at you and you go, how is that supposed to change my life? How is something that happened 2,000 years ago, a message, information like that, and if you say, if I take it in, it'll change my life, I don't get it. If God wants to change my life, tell him to get me a better job. If God wants to change my life, tell him to get me a better family, get me a better spouse, get me out of this situation. Make, you know what they're saying? If God wants to change my life, let me use a hammer. Let him do something immediately that happens. And instead, Jesus holds up a seed and he says, swallow this because it's so much better than a hammer. It doesn't change the outside situation, but it has the power to change everything about you and to transform you because inside this seed is life and that life is power. So the first thing, first question, what is the seed? The seed is a message. It's information. It's the gospel. The second question is, how do we get the seed? And that's what the parable really is concerned about. In fact, the par most of the parables, parable is about how to miss the seed, how to miss the message. Because the message is information. You have to hear it, but then in order to receive it, you have to believe it. In order to get it inside of you, you have to believe it. And there's a difference between hearing and believing. It's like there, there's an old Seinfeld episode where Jerry Seinfeld goes to rent a car and he's made a reservation for the car. And when he gets there, they don't have a car for him. And he says, but I made a reservation. And they said, yeah, we have your reservation, but we don't have a car for you. And Jerry Seinfeld says, anybody can take a reservation. The most important part of a reservation is keeping the reservation, right? And that's the same thing with information. It's one thing to hear it, it's another thing to receive it and believe it. Listening. Listening carefully 
listening deeply, listening with understanding is the primary skill of the kingdom of God. One of the dangers of being a preacher is that you can become a better talker than you are a listener. Because when I spend time in a week and I'm going to preach, I spend time looking at a passage and trying to figure out how I'm going to communicate it to you guys. How I'm going to make it interesting, how I'm going to make it so it makes sense to you, so I, I end up using props or illustrations or stories. And if all I do is become a talker and I don't become a listener myself, then it will never really change me, and I'll be the one who misses it. So I have to become a hearer, and some of you know this and some of you don't, but every Friday I come into this room when it's empty, and I have it reserved so that nobody else can come in, and I preach I preach the same message I'm going to give you. And I do it, one, so I can hear it, because then I can know whether it makes sense. But the other reason I do it is so I can, that's my time to preach it to myself. Because I know that if the message doesn't have the power to change me when I preach it to myself, it won't have the, have the power to change you when I preach it to you. And because the message is a seed and it requires you to hear it and listen, it's very easy to reject it's very easy to miss. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus is walking along, and a guy comes up to him and he says, hey, Jesus, I'm in. I will follow you wherever you go. What would you say if you were Jesus? Well, if I was Jesus, I would say, that's awesome. You're just the kind of guy I'm looking for. I need bunches of guys like you. Come on. You know what Jesus says to him? The guy says, I'm in. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus looks at him and he says, foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Why is Jesus so rude to that guy? You know what he's saying? Are you sure you've listened? Have you, are you sure that you heard me? And that's a great question because there are bunches of ways to listen. All of us have had the experience of talking to someone and had them and watch them get a text on their phone and they begin to text back while you're talking. Most of the time it happens with our kids, right? And you'll say, are you listening to me? And they'll go, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> and you go, you're not really listening. In order to hear the gospel, in order to get the seed, in order to receive it, it requires you to completely focus. And in this parable, Jesus gives four different types of listening. And in three of the types, they miss it. And this is super important because what the Bible says at the end of time, we're all going to stand before God. And there are going to be bunches of people who will say to God, I heard you. And God's going to say, no. No, you never really heard me. You never really listened. And you don't want to be that. So let me show you the, the first three types of listening where you, you hear it, but you don't really receive it. This is the first one, verse, beginning of verse 18. It says, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what's been sown along the path. So when a farmer comes out to sow a seed, and some of the seed falls on this path, and the path is hard. It's, it's like rock. And so the seed just sits there. It never really penetrates the soil. If you've ever sown grass seed on hard ground. Uh, you know what it's like. You come out the next morning and the seed's gone. You don't know if birds ate it or if it got washed away, but it's just gone. This is what I call hard listening. And what this means is that you can come to a place like this church and you can hear the message and you can hear the gospel over and over and over again and have it never really penetrate you, your heart. You never have that aha moment, where all of a sudden you see yourself in a totally different way, the way the Bible portrays you, and you see God as in a totally different way, the way the Bible shows God, and then you see Jesus sacrifice for you, and you should be overwhelmed. You get that overwhelming gratitude and overwhelming joy, and if you've never had that, if you've never had that aha moment, then is a good chance that you're, getting this, you're hearing the seed and it's just sitting there and it's never really penetrated you because 
you're doing hard listening. The other kind of hard listening is when somebody, every once in a while, somebody will come up to me and they'll say, all right, I have trouble with Christianity. I, I have, and uh, I want to ask you a question. I'll say, I will, I will spend any amount of time trying to answer questions for somebody if they say, I have a barrier that's keeping me from believing. And then the person will say, okay, and I'll say, what's your, pro- what's your question? And they'll say, I have a problem with the Bible. I think the, you know, the Bible was written a long time ago, it was changed over the years, and now it's not even close to what was originally written. And I said, it's a great question. I've done a lot of research on that. I know a lot about it and the scholarship in that area, so let me go ahead and explain. And I begin to explain the number of manuscripts and, and how the Bible, by every measure, is the most reliable piece of literature in ancient literature and antiquity. And when I'm halfway through the answer, I can see it in their eyes that even though the answer makes sense, they begin to turn already and they go, oh yeah, okay, okay, oh, I have another problem. And then we go into another problem. And then after that problem, there's another problem. And I start to feel like when I talk to people like that, they're like kids who put their fingers in their ears and go, no, 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 I'm not listening. That's another way of hard listening. So one of the things that I started to do when somebody comes up with an objection and they say, I have a problem with Christianity, I say, if I answer that question, will you receive? Will you receive it? Will you take it in? Will you believe? Right? That's hard listening. The second kind of listener is in uh, verse 20. It says, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. <clears throat> Remember when I, uh, when I said that some people, when you talk to them about uh, the gospel and you give the message, they say, well, if God really wants to change my life, then have him get me a job, have him change my, my situation, have him you know, change my family, heal my body, whatever. Every once in a while, when somebody comes to Jesus, everything kind of falls into place in their life. And they get the job. They, they find their spouse. They, and everything seems like it's working out. And then what they move to, they, they start to see Jesus, whether they realize or not, as a, as a life enhancer. And they start to think, you know, if you follow Jesus, everything's going to work out and you're going to get, and all your dreams are going to come true. And when all of a sudden something bad happens, then all of a sudden they say, I don't get it. I don't understand. This isn't what I signed up for. And they get mad at God and fall away. This is shallow listening. And I call it shallow listening because uh, what happens is you haven't really heard what Jesus says about you. And you haven't really heard what Jesus says about God. And you haven't really heard what Jesus says about himself. Because what Jesus says about you is that you are separated from God and you have sinned and you are lost and you have no hope. What he says about God is that God is holy and absolutely pure. And you are so far away from God, you can't even see him or hear him. And then Jesus says, and I came to bridge that gap and that will cost me everything, everything. And when you get that message, you never, ever feel like you get the short end of the stick with God, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens to those you love. But if you feel like you're a pretty good person and you deserve to be treated well by God, then it's only a matter of time before the sun gets so hot, you wither. That's shallow listening. The third type of listening is verse 22. As for what was sown among thorns, this is one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. Okay, this is a a hard one, because uh, these are people that become miserable. They they receive the word, it grows in them, and then they... uh, The deceitfulness of riches, the cares of the world come up and choke, and it says that they become unfruitful. If the first soil is a hard heart and the second soil is a shallow heart, then this soil is a divided heart. It's when someone says they receive 
the gospel message. They say, I want Jesus. And they put one foot with Jesus. And then they say, but I still want to do what I want to do. I still want to, you know, live with my boyfriend. I still want to do what I want. I still want to live a certain way, the way I want to live, not the way Jesus wants me to live. And then they become miserable. I was uh, talking with a young woman last weekend, or last week. And uh, she just radiated Jesus. If you ever see somebody who radiates Jesus, you recognize it right away in their face and just the way they are. And I had known her 10 years ago when she was far away from God. And this was my first time to sit down with her and just find out. So I said, you got to tell me your story. Because I knew you 10 years ago when you were far away from God, and now I can see what's happened. So tell me, because I never get tired of hearing those stories. And so she told me her story. But at one part in her story, she said, I went on a mission trip, and I came into contact with Jesus, and it was real. It was big. It, it was life-changing. But when I came back from the mission trip, I began to live my life, and I had one foot with Jesus, and then I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I said, I bet you were miserable. And she said, yeah, I was. Because that's the divided heart. And when you have a divided heart, what it says is you are unfruitful, which I used to think meant that you didn't have much of an impact. You didn't serve God the way he wants you to serve him. You didn't have an impact on people around you. But when the Bible talks about fruit, it talks about two types of fruit. There's a fruit that is outside when you have an impact on other people, but there's also a fruit on the inside that he talks about in Galatians chapter 5. And the fruit on the inside is called the fruit of the Spirit. And he, he describes it with nine different words. He says when, the, when you're growing and the fruit of the Spirit is happening inside of you, then you have love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, those nine things. And when this young woman was talking to me, she would say, that's exactly what I didn't have. I didn't have any joy. I didn't have any love. I didn't have any peace. I didn't have any patience. I didn't have any goodness, any kindness. So one of the things that's great about the Christian faith is that there are different markers that you can go, oh, so that's what's wrong with me. It's almost like a symptom. So if you have the symptom of not having love, not having joy, not having peace, not having patience, it's probably because you have a divided heart. You're still trying to do what you want to do. Now, this woman at one point went all in with Jesus. And that's the last verse and the, the, the answer to the last question, what happens when the seed grows? This is verse 23. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands that he indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold and another 60 and in another 30. So I was with this young woman and she was radiating love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. So I knew the fruit of the Spirit was in her. And the occasion that we met last week was at my niece's graduation dinner and this young woman was there because she was one of my niece's spiritual mentors so she was bearing fruit outside of herself and as I sat there and talked with her I realized you know I've been telling you that that Jesus said I come to bring the kingdom and when you pray pray thy kingdom come thy will be done and you and I've been saying we need to pray that the kingdom of God comes right here at this moment to this place and that's what I realized had happened through this young woman, that the kingdom of God, I was sitting right there, and the kingdom of God had come right at that moment to that place because she was the good soil. And when the kingdom of God comes into you, the kingdom of God comes as a seed, as a message. But when you believe that message, there was power in that seed. There is life in that seed to change everything about you and then use you to change the world around you. And so, of course, the question is, what kind, of, what kind of listener are you? You're one of these four. You know that, right? These are the only four choices. Are you a hard listener? Have you been here? Have you heard it? Has, has the seed fallen in you, but it's never really penetrated your heart? Quit being a hard listener. Are you a shallow listener? Are you angry with God because of how he's treated you, how he's done something to you? You need to go back, listen more deeply, listen with understanding. Are you listening with a divided heart? Are you trying to do what you want to do 
but also saying you love Jesus. What I encourage all of us to do is listen with a whole heart, become the good soil so that the fruit comes inside and also comes outside. Because the kingdom of God comes to you to change you and to use you then to change the world. Thy kingdom come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you and I pray for every person here. I pray that you would, uh, that your message of the gospel would come deep down into us, that we'd be the listeners who listen with a whole heart and with understanding and with uh, focus. And then I pray that you will use that message to give us life. And may that come into us with power to change us utterly and completely and then change the world around us. Make us fruitful. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.